Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. I uh, hope you had a great weekend and welcome to the work week. We just want to, um, I got a little bit of a PowerPoint I just wanted to share with you first. Uh, let me go back to my screen. I forgot to share it with you. So here we go. Uh, April is Financial Literacy Month. So um, I just want to let everybody know that as we start our work week, let's look back at Friday. Friday, um, this is where all the money was flowing. Looks like it was flowing out of Microsoft on Friday. NVIDIA was down most of the day. Uh, had a slight bump towards the end of the day. A uh, Google, it looks like I uh, was trying to break out of a consolidation. A lot of the money was moving into JP Morgan as they had a surprise uh, with all the banking crisis. Uh, um, they had a good day on their earnings. Bank of America, they were guessing that they're going to have a good earnings announcement here later today. And um, Citibank had a Good announcement, even though they had pretty um, low earnings. And uh, earlier in the week, um, oil was moving. So, and uh, we have a little bit of money moving down here in asset management. So, let's take a look at our next screen. The S and P 500 uh, rally off of the bottom has been a top-heavy rally. The top five stocks. Um, are contributing a huge portion of the S&P's move. The next 15 um, coming at 0.8%, um, and then the remainder is between, looks like about 0.3%. And then we take a look at the NASDAQ, which has been leading. Um, just seven companies make up over 50% of the NASDAQ 100. What are they? Microsoft at 12.57, Apple at 12.43, Alphabet, which is about a little over 7%, Amazon 6.18, NVIDIA at 5.14, Facebook, Meta 3.64, and Tesla at 3.5. And all these other companies are 49%, a tiny fraction of what these seven top companies are doing. Some of my, one of my screens uh, didn't quite make it here. Um, let's look at the Dow Jones. Looks like we got a, a bearish uh, Harami here. Um, just slightly better than a Doji. The volume is trending down. Um, so it's, it, it really looks like it's losing um, space. If you really take a look at some numbers, okay, you got a bearish Harami, that's negative. Look at the amount of space above its moving average here. That's another negative. Volume is going down, that's the third negative. We got a CCI that's trending down, that's a fourth negative. And the stochastics is moving down. So that's a fifth negative. So there's five negatives on the chart. Possibility it could go up a little bit tomorrow as the futures are indicating, but uh, we'll just have to see where it goes. The IWM, uh, it's kind of bouncing around. It still has some problems with the banks. And we'll look at uh, some news a little later about um, the banks and how things look. Um, it looks like um, on the CCI, it's trending down in the same way on the stochastics. Uh, here we got the QQQ. We see we got this resistance up here. Key thing is, uh, will it be able to break through or will the bonds um, bond yields turn up and then prove that the QQQ will have to turn back? Um, it looks like the volume is slightly higher on Friday, but it looks like we got a doji over here, which 
is a hesitation. It could move up or move down. We'll just have to see more information. Um, and both um, the stochastics and the CCI are hinging. So those are negative for the QQQ. Let's look at the S&P. S&P 500 has a bearish indicator up here. Um, volume is heading down. Uh, both the stochastics and the CCI are trending down. So those are all negatives for the S&P 500. Now we look at the VIX or the volatility index. It's at its lowest point in what you could think of forever. And although volatility is down, the skew, the skew is the volatility of the volatility index. The skew is moving up. So it's saying that the um, VIX is, is going to be much more volatile than it is pointing out in this chart. I um, think that this is going to trend back up, and that'll mean that the S&P 500 is going to trend down. Now, this is looking at our S&P 500 on a monthly level. This is a L shape of the chart. An L shape of the chart generally means that it possibly will head down. It's bumping its head up against this resistance. The only thing that we can really do is look back in time. What, what happened before when we had a similar chart pattern? So this is 2002. We just moved the same chart pattern backwards to 2002. What happened when it got up to this point, this resistance? Well, it just rolled right over. And this is like a, a year's worth of declines because this is a monthly chart. Um, is this what could happen now? Some people are saying that the market is ready to break out that um, the, because the Fed is gonna stop raising rates, things are over. We'll just have to wait and see. Then we take a look at one more S&P chart. We move the, the angle of the L over. This is 2008, what happened here. Same thing as what happened in 2002. Everything just came up to the resistance and then they just rolled right over. So this is also about a year um, in downturn and it didn't come back until 2009. So there we have our historical precedent precedents. Let's take a look at some of the news. Warren Buffett told uh, CNBC that the banking crisis isn't over, but depositors need not worry. Well, if um, the banking crisis isn't over, it's definitely going to hurt people who need to borrow money. Credit crunch fears are taking hold, fueling concerns of a crippling U.S. recession. Here's why investors are so worried about lending drying up in Business Insider. Take a look at small bank real estate loans. Small bank real estate loans are trending lower at the, and um, you can't, let me just move my picture over here a little bit, and you can see we got a little hook as things are coming down. Small bank loans and leases segment details, weekly change, biggest weekly drop in eight years. This isn't good news. Now we'll like at continuing um, jobless claims are consistent with the recession. And just look at this number. This is the highest number that it's ever been. And it doesn't come down from this level in the past. Once we go in over this number, goes straight up, straight up, straight up before it comes back down. So this is not a good sign either. Uh, president of, of Brazil, Lula, called for the end of the dollar to dominance in Shanghai, meets with Xi in Beijing tomorrow. 
This is all consistent with a, a reporting for the last um, three, four months. So it looks like gold should continue going higher. Brazil and China commercial transaction without US without use of the US dollar. Does that mean the petrodollar is done and gone? We'll just have to continue to watch, but this is part of the reason that gold and silver and all the metals have been going up. So with that, I'm going to stop our presentation, stop the share here. And I'm going to just look at two stocks that have been on the news. And um, after today's report, we'll look at um, winners and losers um, at the end of the day. So this is exponential fitness. As we can see, we've got a blue dot here um, against the relative strength of the S&P 500. It just hit a new high. Looks like an ascending base. Ascending base is a base that um, breaks out and just keeps ascending higher. Here's another base, breaks out and ascending higher. Look at it daily. Broke out here at 2131. Exponential Fitness is the largest US fitness group in the country. And it, I believe it was November or December of last year, they signed an, a contract with Princess Cruises to provide fitness for all the Princess Cruises cruise lines. So um, had a recent breakout at 30.7 and um, it's in the blue area here. Um, it's tightening up. This is a good sign, a lot of blue bars on the up volume, and now the red bars are in declining volume, which is a good sign. Come over here, Ex expected earnings this year is up 52%. It's earnings per share is 78, and relative strength to the S&P 500 is 98. That means it's beating 98% of all the other companies on the stock market. And then we'll take a look at uh, one more in the gold area. Thanks to Scott and Market Smith. It looks like it potentially could be a little extended here. There's a lot of gold stocks are extended. But if we take a look at this on the weekly chart, on the long time picture, and draw our line over there, and it looks like it just broke out of this long term consolidation. So do your own due diligence um, on this and anything else that you want to invest in, because we're still in a bear market and these are still treacherous times. And um, that's our show for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope everybody has a great start to their week and keep going after your goals and keep up your activities that'll help you meet and reach your goals and get a, this economy back on track. This has been Mornings with Michael for educational, informational and entertainment purposes only. Hope you have a great day.